Whenever I interview someone for a job, I like to ask this question. What important truth do very few people agree with you on? This question sounds easy because it's straightforward. Actually, it is very hard to answer. It's intellectually difficult because the knowledge that everyone is taught in school is by definition agreed upon. And it's psychologically difficult because anyone trying to answer must say something she knows to be unpopular. This is the opening paragraph of the book Zero to One by Peter Thiel. It perfectly sets the tone for the rest of this book that is search the unknown and have the courage to act. Startup culture in India is picking up. Every day new unicorns are being born and new age businesses are capturing the headlines in newspaper dailies. We have been reading about the grand debut of Nike on the bourses to the flop show of Paytm, backlash for some of Zomato's business plans and controversies still unfolding in Bharat Pay. In my quest to understand the startup ecosystem better and to know what we should look for in a so-called new age business, led me to this fantastic book, Zero to One. There are business books that teach you new concepts and give you great insights. And then there are books like Zero to One that challenge you, question your conventional wisdom and above all, inspire you. It has been written by Peter Thiel, who is a very successful self-made billionaire, entrepreneur and investor. His first successful entrepreneurial venture was PayPal, the very first digital payment system. He founded PayPal in 1998 and later partnered with Elon Musk on this venture. It was sold within four years to eBay for a whopping $1.5 billion. After that, he has set up another successful venture named Palantir and has made several early stage investments in other leading tech startups like Facebook, SpaceX, Airbnb, LinkedIn, Yelp and Spotify. That's some impressive investment list. So when Peter Thiel talks about entrepreneurship and what it takes to set up a successful business venture, we better sit up and listen. This book is mostly relevant for anyone who's interested in entrepreneurship and wants to set up his own venture. Other than that, it will inspire anyone from a student to a young professional who is trying to find their footing in the corporate world. So let us take a glimpse at what the author has to say about what it takes to set up a successful startup. Lesson number one, make vertical progress that changes our world for the better, not just incremental progress. Well, Thiel says progress can take one of the two forms, vertical or horizontal. Horizontal progress essentially means to incrementally improve upon things that already work. Vertical progress, on the other hand, means doing new things and finding new solutions. Thiel has used a zero to n continuum to explain this. He says, Horizontal progress is like going from 1 to N and vertical progress is moving from 0 to 1. That is creating something that did not exist. Like the first smartphone uh, introduced by Apple in 2007, this was revolutionary as for the first time consumers could browse internet on their phones just like they would on a desktop computer. This was a vertical progress, which is going from 0 to 1. 
After that, several horizontal advancements have been made by improving various features and applications of smartphones, but none of them are as radical and impactful as the first launch by Apple because these are one to n movements. If you want to be successful, then do something new. You can only get huge success if you move from 0 to 1. Do something which has not happened before. You may get some success by moving from 1 to n, but that won't be huge. So the question for entrepreneurs here is, do you have a singularly unique technology or solution or is it just an iteration of an existing solution? Lesson number two, create lasting value by creating a monopoly and avoid competition at all costs. Author says, and I quote, if you want to create and capture lasting value, don't build an undifferentiated commodity business. Instead, build the kind of company that's so good at what it does that no other firm can offer a close substitute. In this context, he further explains the creative monopolies are beneficial for the society because they improve the world through new products that benefit everyone. Monopolies also translate uh, in uh, sustainable profits for the creator as they are not competing with anyone in the space. This provides them enough headroom to invest for the future. Whereas competition means no profit for anyone, undifferentiated products and just a struggle for survival, meaning they possibly cannot plan for their future. Overall competition impedes vertical progress. Here he has compared the US airline industry with Google. In the year 2012, the airlines industry brought in $160 billion and on an average airfare of $178 earned only 37 cents per passenger as profits. In the same year, Google earned a total of $50 billion but kept 21% as profits which is over 100 to 150 times the airline industry's profit for that year. This is because airline players compete with each other whereas Google has a search engine monopoly. So the question for entrepreneurs is does your idea have the potential to be a creative monopoly or is it just another me too idea? Lesson number three, create a lasting monopoly. Escaping competition will give you a monopoly, but even a monopoly is only a great business if it can survive in the future. For a company to be valuable, it must grow and endure. Thiel has listed factors that can sustain a monopoly. This includes proprietary technology, network effects, economies of scale and branding. He says, have a technology or solution that provides at least 10 times better speed, performance or convenience over the closest substitute in order to get noticed and have lasting impact. Until Amazon launched online book platform, books were being sold only through bookshops that could carry only limited collections. Amazon on the other hand could offer a wide variety of books through its online platform and therefore became such a success. Network effects means value of the offering grows as more people join the network. It makes it more difficult for others to compete with you later on. Facebook started as a networking site for Harvard students, 
but its value grew as more and more people joined the network because their friends were also using this platform. Given its reach, today it is very difficult for any other networking site to displace Facebook and same goes even for WhatsApp. Economies of scale brings down your production costs as volumes increase. Businesses with competitive advantage get stronger as they get bigger because anyway their margins are high and with increase in scale, costs also start reducing. A good startup should have the potential for great scale built into its first design. Branding creates awareness of your product which lowers your selling and distribution costs. It creates a strong barrier for your competitors. But branding works only if the core product is strong. Apple is a perfect amalgamation of all the four factors listed here. It has a complex suite of a proprietary technology. It manufactures products at a scale where it can dominate the market. It enjoys network effect from its content ecosystem. Finally, these monopolistic advantages reinforces its brand in the market. So the question here for entrepreneurs is, will your market position be defensible 10 to 20 years in the future? Lesson number four, look where no one else is looking. Thiel calls these ideas which are yet unknown, difficult but doable as secrets. He says that mostly these are hidden in plain sight. It is the simplicity that makes it so difficult for someone to spot them. One should actively seek out such secrets in places where no one else is looking. Who would have expected Airbnb to be such a success? Most people would have laughed um, at the idea that strangers will sleep in your home. Yet the founders of Airbnb recognize a secret that hotels offer only a limited supply of rooms in a city, but people living there always have spare rooms in their homes, which they would be willing to rent. So question again for the entrepreneurs is, have you identified a unique opportunity that others don't see? Lesson number five, don't forget the sales. Even though sales is all around us, but quite often it is the most underestimated function of a business plan. Especially tech companies seem to have the attitude uh, if you build it, they will come. But Thiel strongly disagrees with this approach. He goes on to say that superior sales and distribution itself can create a monopoly even with no product differentiation. Selling technique has to be customized for your product offering. One has to ensure that the revenue generated over the life of a customer it exceeds the cost of acquisition of new customers. PayPal became popular very quickly because they essentially turned their whole user base into commissioned sales force. If you recommended PayPal to your friend and they signed up with your link, then you would receive $10. While this was an expensive strategy, it gave them the critical mass early on, making it difficult for other payment networks to compete with them. Having created this barrier, they knew with their service, revenue per customer will eventually exceed the cost of acquisition. So the question for entrepreneurs is, do you have a way to deliver your product? Besides the broader level messages uh, that we have highlighted here, the author has provided many more ideas worth noting for an entrepreneur trying to make a mark. So we highly recommend that you also read this book, 
but here is a summary of what we discussed today thiel says to be successful make vertical progress where you create new things create monopolies as these will help you retain substantial profit to plan for the company's future and avoid competition at all costs as these will eat away your very profit just creating monopolies is not sufficient these have to sustain this is achievable if your business has a combination of factors such as proprietary technology economies of scale networks effect and branding consciously look for secrets that is ideas that are unexplored difficult but doable finally do not forget the sales and distribution they will not come just because you built it do let us know whether you found this summary useful and please give us your suggestions on the books that you would like us to cover in future until then stay safe and stay informed kya aapko ye video pasand aaya to fir aise informative or interesting videos dekhne ke liye informed investor app download kare